All right, guys, so we're diving into this repair of the CD960. First thing you got to do is remove these feet. Made of plastic, Looked like it had a little aluminum or some other metal surrounding them. All these screws, they look like they're copper, but they're not copper through and through. They're just plated. So they're still magnetic, which is cool. But the copper plating looks so nice. Look at those. Here, I'm just doing everything in, I think, eight times sped up on Final Cut for you guys, so it's not like too super long. This bottom plate had a ton of screws in it, which I appreciate because it's super sturdy and solid, connected to the chassis in a really meaningful way. Look at that chassis. And, whoop, oh, just dive right into the circuit board here, my bad. So this is the underside. There is the CD-M1. Love it. And I'm just disconnecting the cables here because I want to be able to remove the entire CD setup from the top. So these cables, they're kind of in there. My fingers don't fit, but I got them out. The green piece, keep it held back. And then you just get your thumb in there and wiggle that little plastic. Don't break it off. Just jam. Oh, okay, thank God. Same thing for the button in the front. Go easy. Now you can pull this little plastic piece out and get to the goods. Uh, here's the problem. All these belts were broken, every last one of them. And they leave behind in different places just this gooey mess these belts whatever compound they're made of they're breaking down and they leave behind this goop which you got to clean out and it's not an easy clean i sped that way up because it took way too long anyway pulled the screws out of the top there are more than one they're i don't know four probably so i could get access to this entire cd setup got a couple motors there one drives the loading tray the other drives the hold down arm i'm just dusting everything off here just going through and getting all of this rubbery, mushy mess out of here. And what I would try to do is pull it out with the pick as best I can, trying to keep it whole so it brings out as much as possible. Got lucky there. Got a big chunk out without it melting. Look at that goop. Oh, smear it around. Good. Good job, bud. <sighs> this is tedious now remember this sped up eight times so I'm gonna make you sit through this pain a little bit because if you're gonna try this if you're gonna do this yourself this is what you'll be doing and you'll be getting bored anyway these little belts tried to leave their bits behind everywhere and in most cases very successful at their mission Okay, I'm doing a quick nano camp unboxing here. Um, this is the four belts I need. Here is the drive wheel spacer. My metal wire that was uh, on there for the drive wheels, it was already disassembled, so I didn't need that spacer. Anyway, all right, this is the rail on the CDM1 that holds one side of the loading tray. You saw me pop out that snap clip, but now I'm just pulling this old washer off there. It's just basically disintegrating. There's the new one from Nano Camp, and it's spongy and has some life in it. And this old stuff is just all the moisture has evaporated out of it, and it's just this little brittle piece of what once was spongy rubber. Anyway, got to clean this rail, get the uh, bits of rubber off there, and dust and all that. Did the same thing on the back side here. There's a washer that goes there as well. But that one's going to leave us a little surprise that you'll see later in the video. All right, so I've got the, um, the plastic arm that attaches to the tray back in. Got the snap ring back in. And here I'm going to go ahead and lay out these belts because they are each a different size. And they have to be in the right spot. So 
I did use that little measuring tool, NanoCamp sent to figure out exactly which was which. That was helpful. And here you will see me installing loading tray belt. So that connects the motor to this pulley here. And then now this larger belt is going to connect that pulley to the roller where eventually that metal wire will attach to or go around, I should say. Here I'm just spinning the wheels to make sure everything's turning freely and it feels great. Nothing seized. Doesn't feel like it needs to be taken apart and relubricated at all. All right, now on this side, this is for the hold down um, arm. So I kind of wedge this first belt in there, get it around the motor, popped into place. Feels great. Nothing seized up here. Everything's nice. Now this larger belt, I kind of twisted it, putting it on, and you'll see once I get it snapped in. Yeah, see, look at that. So I'm, I flipped it over and I'm noticing that I have my belt all twisted. So just snap it back into place. Nice. Now I'm just going through the motion here to make sure that the hold down arm is moving freely with these pulleys here. Assembly looks great. Okay, I'm on to fixing this uh, metal drive line. This thing is really interesting. It's got the spring on here that I'm fiddling with trying to get it apart. I eventually do. Now, this goes on in a way where it needs to be wrapped under the wire. So there's three coils of that wire and they have to uh, go in a very specific way. So make sure you follow the manual on that one. And as long as you follow the manual there, it should roll nice and smooth. Now we're diving into some cleaning. Pulling double-sided tape off and getting the adhesive off. There's a volume indicator that gets mounted there. Now I'm diving into cleaning the Philips CD player with a Philips Sonicare toothbrush. That loosened up all those bits and knocked a bunch out of there. Then I could come back with the toothpick and really start getting after it. This was some tedious work, and man, I don't want to do this ever again. But little by little, with the toothpick, with the pick, and the compressed air, I got her done. Now when I went to click this tray back in, I felt some resistance on that final push as the device is about to click over and, and I wasn't, wasn't happy with the way that was feeling so I thought I'd take this circuit board up and check out the mechanism. That's it right there. So I shot the air duster in there and some contact cleaner and the two of those seem to solve the issue. This is moving smoothly and that little bit of resistance I felt is gone. This was so satisfying. I'm so glad I didn't have to take that mechanism apart. Here's the bottom of the circuit board I pulled up and everything was looking good there so I can go ahead and start putting this beast back together. I just had to do a little cable routing here, getting all those prepped to be plugged back in and I could screw this circuit board down. I really enjoyed this process. I learned a lot as I went along watched a few YouTube videos about these kind of repairs and then just dove in. Not that hard. Just gotta move slow. So you don't break anything.
Now I'm just connecting the CDM1. Now here what I'm doing is put some zip ties on the wires for the CDM1. When I remove that from the chassis, I cut some zip ties in order to let that move around more freely. So now I'm just tidying things up. And the wires, the way they were sitting at the back of the CDM1, they were kind of just twisted and bunched up and had a zip tie around them. And you'll see me try and do that in a minute here. See how those are sitting there bunched up, yeah. I know that looks a little sloppy, but really that's what the way it was. And now I'm just screwing the entire CD unit back down to the chassis. See, I still got my chip clip on there holding everything properly in place. That was a great little tool there. Now I've got to put the loading disc tray back together. Now this piece, the, um, the part that drops out, on that had to ride under those plastic pieces. So once I got that situated, I could start to put the CD tray back in. And this was a kind of a fiddly job. Um, I didn't want to move too fast because I didn't want to break anything or bend anything. And then this is the other side. So there's the rail on the one side and then this side doesn't have that cylinder rail. It has a kind of piece of angled metal where this piece of plastic just rides on this just a little flat rail and there you see me attaching the other side too and it looks like there's a lot going on here but really it's just fiddling with it to get these springs in the right location which I eventually do get the um, the drive line attached to the outside and just two screws you didn't see it in the video there but I eventually got that little piece of metal in the right spot now I'm attaching that L bracket to the flat rail over there and things are moving smoothly again. NanoCamp included this bearing oil and it says to just put one micro drop on there. And that's the, um, the ribbon cable that connects the button on the front of the tray. Here I'm just powering it on and trying it out. Now you hear the whirring of the motor there. That's a problem. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Should have stopped. I messed with it a bit and I, I couldn't figure out a problem with any of the the sensors on where the tray is located so I figured it must be the washer the one I took off was really really thin and the nano camp one was pretty thick so I cut the nano camp washer in half Voila. and wouldn't you know it success look at that what a brilliant machine so beautiful all right, we re read a disc just fine. So now we can start putting everything back together. Actually, you know what happened in that situation? It didn't read the disc just fine because I forgot I didn't connect all of these small cables up under the chassis that connect the CDM1 to the brains of the unit. So anyway, I connected those cables. I cleaned this up a bit more, dusted it out. And then I think I'm going to pull out the panel here eventually. Yeah, I do. And let's get that reattached with the bazillion screws in the bottom there. But wow, this thing is built like a tank. It's got that massive chassis. And then this you know, bottom plate connects really solidly to that chassis. And the four feet are screwed back on here. So fun. All right, let's not break this because that would be a tragedy now. Jeez, can you imagine that doing all that work and then break this tiny flimsy little piece of plastic? Oh.
Oh, okay. Got it back on. Nice. Now, since you didn't break that part, you gotta like at least maybe break this part for this to be a true DIY project, but oh wow. So lucky. Alright, let's shoot our dust shooter in here one more time. And then proceed to put this still dusty top back on the CD player. Great. Clean up the side. That should do to satisfy what little bit of desire to clean this thing I have. Screw it back together. Oh, there it is. Nice and finished up. Great. Thumbs up. Great shot. Not. Wow. What trash.